Hello listeners, today you are listening to a special episode of The Free Marketeers. I, Chris Hutting, am interviewing Martin van Staden on a constitutional court matter handed down, or judgment was recently handed down that is very relevant to South African drug policy. Uh, the court seems to have declared the prohibition against the use, cultivation and possession of marijuana, also known as weed or dacha, is unconstitutional. The Free Market Foundation, as you know, cares very much about personal liberty, which means that this judgment is very relevant to the work they do. Martin van Staden, the FMF's legal researcher, is here with me to discuss the judgment and answer some common questions. Martin? Thanks, Chris. So I should state up front that I am not giving legal advice uh, during this podcast. I am not an admitted attorney or an advocate. I do have a law degree, uh, but you should note, listeners, that what I'm saying here comes from a purely public policy perspective. So do not rely on anything I'm about, about to say as a legal defense or even as a legal argument in court, um, and rather consult an actual admitted attorney. So that should, should be obvious that neither me nor the FMF will bear any responsibility for your reliance on the following information. Thank you for making that clear, Martin. Okay, getting into the matter at hand, first things first, what is the question that actually came in front of the court? So the court had to, this this is the constitutional court, had to decide whether certain provisions in South African legislation limit the right to privacy, which is contained in section 14 of the constitution. And if that legislation does indeed limit that right, to whether that limitation is justifiable. Regarding the Constitution, what exactly does it say regarding the right to privacy? So, Section 14 of the Constitution says that everyone has a right to privacy. This includes the right not to have yourself or your property or your possessions searched or seized by government, or to have your communications, uh, the privacy of your communications infringed. So basically, the court repeated again that the right to privacy means the right to be left alone within reason. Right, and then what exactly did the court conclude about this being an infringement of the right to privacy? So the court said that it is certainly a limitation of the right to privacy. In law, we call this uh, the prima facie, um, or prima facie, however you want to pronounce the Latin term, uh, which means that on, on, on an obvious basis, it's a limitation of the right to privacy. Right, when someone on the face of it, yeah. yeah, on the face of it. If someone barges into your house and you're smoking weed mm. or whatever, Surely that is a right to privacy, uh, a limitation of the right mm. to privacy. But as in any uh, modern legal system, this is not the end of the inquiry. Uh, so Section 36 of the Constitution says that rights may be limited if that limitation is reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society based on the values of freedom, equality, and human dignity. So even though it is a limitation of the right to privacy, the court still has to determine whether this limitation was reasonable and justified. In your view, is this limitation, uh, the court, the, was it uh, reasonable and justifiable that the court decided this? Well, I would say it's definitely not reasonable and justifiable, and the court seems to have agreed uh, with, with that in this case. So the court said that the criminalization of marijuana possession, use and cultivation was invasive and that the government did not go far enough to justify the prohibition. And this was the case in the, the high court judgment as well, which was sometime last year or this year, I can't uh, recall. But the court there also said, uh, listen, the government has not uh, gone far enough to say, listen, our... Uh, limitation of the right to privacy when it comes to marijuana use is justified on these grounds. The government's evidence was very, very weak and the constitutional court um, agreed. So the court therefore concluded that it was not reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society to limit the right to privacy in this way. And in doing so, the court also referred to the fact that a bunch of other countries, which are also open and democratic societies around the world have or are in the process of decriminalizing uh, marijuana. So it mentioned Austria, California and the US, uh, I believe the capital territory in Australia and so forth. And that what that the court used is an indication that this, if, if those open and democratic societies saw fit to decriminalize and, and recognize it as a, a human right to do what you want in your own house or your own home or in private, uh, then uh, it's, it's also can't be justified in South Africa. 
Okay, Martin, getting into the question, which uh, I think many of our listeners will be most interested in, the <laughs> exciting stuff. Uh, does this mean now that the amount of weed you can use is unlimited? Uh, so fortunately or unfortunately, no. <laughs> the court looked at medical evidence, and I must emphasize neither of us are doctors, so uh, let's defer to the court on this. The court looked at the medical evidence, uh, which appeared to suggest that the use of marijuana in small amounts may be harmless, but if you use it in large quantities, it can be quite harmful. And this is where the, the right to privacy thing comes in. If it's not harmful, i.e. small quantities, then government has no interest in interfering in your personal liberty. Right. But if it is uh, very harmful, then automatically government acquires what is called a, a legitimate government purpose or mm. whatever to get involved and, uh, so to say, save you from yourself or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the court cannot and did not say how much you may use. Mm. Uh, it simply said, quote, small amounts, mm -hmm. close quote. Uh, and it left that question to parliament. So the court cannot legislate on behalf of parliament and say mm -hmm. so many ounces or kilograms or whatever. Uh, so there will presumably be a law in the near future uh, from parliament that defines the quantity that you may use uh, and cultivate. Uh, in the meantime, just use your common sense and make sure you uh, you don't use much of it. Right, so let's say that you have some of these small amounts. Does this mean anyone can smoke or use weed? So no, the court was very specific in saying only adults. Uh, it used the word adult throughout. But then again, it also used the words children throughout, uh, <laughs> saying that children may not obviously cultivate and use and possess marijuana. But as courts often do, they, do, they did not define what they meant by children uh, so you'll need to exercise common sense again and just uh, err on the side of caution and assume that if you are under 18 you may not use cultivate or possess marijuana and if you are over 18 uh, i.e a major then you may narrowing it down a bit for the adults who can then obtain weed and if they decide to smoke it where could they smoke it so when the case was in the high court, um, that court said that it can be cultivated and consumed at home or in a private dwelling, uh, none of which it defined, of mm. course. <laughs> the constitutional court, rightfully, I think, took it a bit further and said that it simply needs to be a, quote, private place, uh, which is obviously not limited to your home or your house. Um, and of course, uh, the court did not define what a private place means. Mm. If private place isn't defined, how will people know where they can use it? Doesn't that open serious issues of arbitrariness? So presumably Parliament uh, will spell it out in legislation in the near future. Uh, but in the meantime, it will really come down to the discretion of the user and quite unfortunately to the discretion of the police. So um, if you end up in court being charged with, charged with, um, with using or whatever marijuana in um in in a not private place mm. uh in a public place i don't know if public is automatically the the opposite of private place right um then you can basically you, you will be uh required to convince the judge that where you were caught using it is in fact a private place mm. and the judge will need to take in various circumstances into account um so if you're on a bus and there's a, a lot of people around you you mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult to uh, convince the judge it's a private place uh, but maybe if you're a sole proprietor and you have your own business uh, that's not a home uh, but maybe you can make an argument and say listen I had no customers at that time it's a private place so yeah it, it always depend on on the circumstances so of course it's not ideal that the court did not define what private place means but in my view it's still far better than the complete ban on the use and possession and cultivation of marijuana so just keep your wits about you and make it an exercise of common sense uh to to determine for yourself whether where you are now is a private place so careful. Let's presume for a minute that you're stuck in traffic and you really want to get home and you're getting stressed and all that, you know, all that sort of stuff we're all very, very familiar with. Uh, what does this ruling mean now for having weed in your car or on your person? Can people now pull over on the side of the highway and, you know, light up a joint and just sit back a bit? So it's not 100% clear. Um, so obviously, if you are now allowed to use 
uh, weed in your private place, uh, sometimes there's going to be a need to transport uh, the weed from one private place to another mm. private place. Uh, I don't think the court said that you must, you can only smoke weed where you find yourself now in your home, mm -hmm. your address. I don't think that's what the court meant, but I, I may be wrong. So it's not completely uh, clear, but I think it's, it's probably reasonable to say that you can have the drug on you mm -hmm. on your person and in your car uh as long as you're not using it so uh, right. very important you cannot drive under the influence of marijuana that is just like driving under the influence of alcohol or driving while tired you will be charged with negligent driving mm -hmm. and if you end up killing someone you can go to jail for the a very long time uh, so uh, rather don't come close to this drug while you while you're in your car but when it comes to transporting these things uh sure i think that your car is probably a private place and i think certainly your person will be regarded as a private place uh, for the possession not necessarily not necessarily the use mm -hmm. of the marijuana regarding the economic opportunities does this mean now that people can buy and sell weed maybe if they want to make a little money on the side so no, the court was unfortunately, in, in my view, and I, I guess in the Free Market Foundation's view, very clear that uh, this new decriminalization of uh, uh, the possession, use, and cultivation of marijuana does not extend to trade or dealing in the drug. Uh, so you cannot buy and you cannot sell uh, marijuana. Um, you can definitely now grow it for yourself at at home or in a quote private place, mm. uh, but dealing in in cannabis can still very much land you in jail. What about those of us who are big at heart and want to give uh, you know things to our fellow man? What about giving away cannabis for free? Is that now allowed? So it, this is not clear from the judgment. Uh, so intuition or uh, what intuitively you would think that if you're not allowed to sell it and trade and it is banned that that you can uh, give it away for free to your friends um so the court says the possession of weed must be for your own personal consumption but then elsewhere it says uh it must simply be for the personal consumption of an adult so note the difference in words mm -hmm. which are always important from a legal perspective first it said your own personal consumption then it said for the personal consumption of an adult. So there, there is an obvious difference here. Uh, and in the first place, it means that you can only grow it for yourself. In the second place, it may mean that you can grow it and give it to your friends uh, to use mm. uh, in a private place. So it is not entirely clear to me whether this means you cannot cultivate weed and give it to someone else for their own personal consumption. But as always, I would advise erring on the side of caution until there is more clarity, which will hopefully come from the act of parliament the legislation that will be passed uh, soon um, and rather do not give or take marijuana from others even though you're not paying or whether you want to barter rather not uh, for now keep it to only that that you personally are uh, growing and cultivating what does this ruling mean for people already in jail for possession or the use of marijuana does this mean we'll see them released you know tomorrow see them back uh, in society so unfort a very this this is to me the biggest travesty of this case. So yes. unfortunately, the court said that um, its order that these laws are unconstitutional does not apply retrospectively. Mm -hmm. So this means uh, we can uh, from the high court's judgment last. Let's take it last year. Uh, from the moment of that judgment, these laws would be considered unconstitutional. Before that, right. it it would still be illegal for you to have had. Uh, marijuana on you or to have used it or to have cultivated it so if you um, were arrested for example in 2013 for cultivating marijuana whether it's for your personal use or others use and you are in serving a five-year jail sentence you will probably need to com complete that sentence because you broke the law and the court said that this will bring uncertainty to our criminal justice system if it said that the, this re applies retrospectively mm -hmm. But uh, the small ray of hope, uh, I guess, um, is that the courts will now be far more lenient uh, in, in their handling of, of these cases. So, for example, if someone who was arrested and is serving a jail sentence now can appeal their sentence and uh, maybe say that in light of this judgment, 
surely the sentence needs to be at least mitigated. I think the courts will say, all right, you are being punished for something that is no longer illegal. We will let you free with uh, noting that you've served enough time or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So there, there is a level of leniency that I think will definitely come out of this. But formally, uh, you still committed a crime. And uh, if, if you are already in jail, you will formally still need to uh, serve out your sentence. Okay, Martin, a final question for you today. Uh, what happens next? What, uh, what do you foresee happening in Parliament? So yeah, the court directed Parliament to, within two years, 24 months, uh, fix the the unconstitutionality of the laws. So basically, it's asking Parliament to say, hey, make it legal now for people to use, cultivate, and possess marijuana for private private use in a private place. Uh, So Parliament has two years to do that. And uh, in the meantime, the court has changed the interpretation of these laws uh, so as to make sure that no other adults are arrested or charged for the private use uh, uh, and cultivation or, or possession of weed. So basically, the provisions in the, the laws as they stand are the same. It prohibits it entirely. But the court read in certain provisions saying that there is now an exception for this private and personal use in a private place. So you are now allowed as of uh, whenever the judgment came out to use, possess and cultivate marijuana in a private place for personal use. Uh, and Parliament will just formalize that within two years and hopefully bring us some more clarity. Okay, Martin, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that the listeners find this uh, informative and useful uh, in their personal lives. I certainly learned quite a bit today. There's a lot of news circulating around this now. And I think we uh, we spent some good time teasing out some of the intricacies and implications of this new ruling. Uh, listeners, thank you very much for listening to this special episode. Thank you for your time. Uh, please remember to uh, like our YouTube channel where you'll find all our podcasts. Uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter where you'll find daily updates on all our articles, events uh, and podcasts. Thank you.